Howdy all of you delicious people. We are here today to review The Matrix Resurrections. So, going of course in this movie, uh, I'm going to be a little bit like kind of really just blunt about this film, probably much more than I normally would. Um, I honestly, when I go through this film, I feel like I need an IQ test uh, before I go in and watch this movie. Like, we have this movie that feels like it's uh, talking so much about capitalism and all these things that is just going, like, over my head a lot. Uh, I kind of feel like there's so much wasted dialogue here because there's not enough action scenes in this movie. This movie is not a movie. It's a mess. Uh, there's some things that I can like about it. Uh, like, I like the whole gaming approach that we go on into this movie with. But there's so many, like, retconning, changing things that they're forced to do in this movie. And because this movie is to have taken place 60 years after the last Matrix film. And so, hey guys, we like we did a lot of new things, like and you should be happy about that. Like as if like this movie after this whole thing is going to be done is going to drop trow and and I'm just supposed to like suck off the fact that like, oh man, we did so many new things and you did a ton of copying and pasting also, but no, new, no, just come on, just <laughs> no, <laughs> I have a headache. No, I, I, no, I'm not, I'm not gonna, no, I'm not gonna suck off anything uh, of just being so impressed with this film that they uh, eventually changed certain things and tweaked uh, and they they talk about coding in this film, and they talk about binary, and they talk about uh like gaming developer lingo, and oh drugs or uh, ideas of the new drugs, oh, like that kind of dialogue in this film, where it's like this game is gonna be revolutionary, <laughs> like what? Bong was anybody smoking when they were putting together this script? Just like, yeah, <laughs> let me pop out another one of these Matrix bad boys and just, yeah. <laughs> Somebody was high as a kite when they came up with this movie. Uh, and I hope that they had a lot of fun while putting it together. Uh, man, uh... I can also like certain characters in this movie. Like, I was happy that we had, like, Neil Patrick Harris in this film. I could like we had uh, Jessica Henwick in this movie, who I know as Colleen Wing in the Iron Fist uh, Netflix series. I can actually like uh, the guy who ends up playing Morbius in this film, who's actually uh, the guy who is also in, like, the Watchmen show and Candyman. Um, and I can also tell that the younger actors are doing a lot of the heavy lifting here, <laughs> where it's like, yeah, you're not going to see Keanu Reeves doing any flipping and flopping in this movie, and you're not going to see, like... Uh, trinity in this film doing any flipping and flopping oh no like they're gonna come up with some kind of way to protect these actors and because they have other things to go ahead and do uh so yeah you're not gonna be seeing a lot of flipping and flopping in this movie and you're just gonna see a lot more heavily things of dialogue where we end up having one guy literally talking gibberish in this movie where he's like, Hey, have it a sequel and franchise and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and I'm like, you know what? This seems like at this point, like it seems like this guy is talking English to me in this film because I feel like there's no difference than, <laughs> than the sequel franchise, blah, 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 goofy guy than any rest of this movie's dialogue. What a waste of a film. 
Uh, I didn't even actually go and watch this movie in the theater. I went and saw it on a bootleg because I'm like, yeah, a bootleg is going to be so much more worth it uh, than actually watching the legitimate film. Like, we had at one point at the very tail end of that, like, for some reason or not, it just cut off. But I ended up getting, like, the bulk of what is happening at the tail end of the movie. Uh, like, really, we have, like, I think right at the end of that movie anyway, so I didn't feel like I was missing much. Uh, there wasn't an action sequence to be had. It was just more dialogue that I'm just like, God, I'm so sick of freaking dialogue. But we end up incorporating a lot of gaming lingo in this movie. Uh, we also incorporate a lot of, like, going from, like, scene to scene to scene to scene to scene to scene, scene, scene. Hey, like... Hey, we're going from one location to another. Good for you. Like, drop that trowel. <laughs> Let me go at it. <laughs> no, I'm not. It's not going to happen. Um, I also like the tipping of the hat of Warner Brothers in this movie. I thought that that was really cool. Uh, but yeah, so like, again, like, or if I haven't said this already, this movie is not a movie. It's a mess. Uh, this is to just be like, where is the action? Like we had so much dia We had a lot of dialogue in the first matrix movie, but then after that, it was just like action, action, action. And in this movie, they're like, wait a minute, wait for, like, hold up for the action. We we have to go and tell you a billion things that's going on with this new world. And we're having uh, Neo eventually going on to make his way to Ion, which is the kind of the new, uh, like, defense of things. It's like the human... Uh, like resistance now and so like yeah so like that's that's all that i like i want to just talk about this in a cryptic like sense i want to go out of my way to go into this movie in a spoiler like sense if i can even do that because good god this dialogue um like, I might have to just kind of, like, go and curve through this film and to just try to get to the meat and potatoes of this movie. Because I, like, the dialogue is just a jumbled mess of, like, oh, this is an analyst and and this is a... <laughs> and this is a, a, a character from another movie that's a different person now. Like, oh, like this, like, is it, this is a different Smith. This is Smith 2.0 kind of thing. And, oh, like this, like, uh, this isn't Trinity now. This is some girl named Tiffany. And, oh, this is, uh, like, uh, here's a different Morbius. <laughs> or Morpheus. Here's a different one of those. And wait a minute. There is... <laughs> Good God, let's go into it. Let's go to that double five because otherwise that time in again to go into spoiler time, spoiler time. It's about that time you can do spoil this movie. Uh, currently in theaters right now, there's no easy way to say you could watch this conveniently anywhere else. I think this could have been just another one that they should have just dropped in HBO Max. Uh, but... Uh, I think probably The Matrix Awakens, the video game that they're popping out. I actually think that that may, like, it looks really, it, it looks more interesting to go into that than whatever the heck this new thing is. Uh, so probably the video game is to eventually be much more of a, like, oh, okay, well, like, even if we're going through and kind of replaying bits and pieces of The Matrix, like, I think it would be much more worth it to watch a gameplay of that video game than watch this movie. Uh, so everybody just review the Matrix video game. Don't even bother going and talking about this movie. So 
spoilers. Spoilers for this. I'm going to pop out all the spoilers right now. So, we have, at the very beginning of this film, we have a girl named Bugs. And we have her operator that is... Uh, and here's the weird, goofy thing. We have the operator that's following bugs around here and i'm like wait a minute so is like bugs hooked into the matrix too or like is he just trying to be her kind of like support system in a like i'm like is he like is he like al to bugs sam beckett if you've ever seen the show quantum leap then what i mean here is is uh is bugs operator to be this kind of imaginary friend that bugs can see here and we have to see because technically uh like it just looks interesting for them to do this so we have a replaying of the matrix movie scene here where trinity is to go and get this phone call from cypher and then go on and have these police officers breaking into this room for trinity bleep, 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 bleep. that's all folks for trinity to go on and beat the crap out of all these people and so bugs is kind of confused here because they're going and taking old code and saying that it's new here and Bugs is like, because there's, there's so much time here where we have to re-go back to certain places that are to be, of course, tied from the Matrix film here. We have to go into familiar places and just be like, oh, this is from the Matrix movie. Oh my God, they re- uh, establish this one, uh, this one place. Oh my God. <laughs> so Trinity is going and again, performing this whole scene, but it's not our Trinity. It's like her stunt double. <laughs> and so, so this time around, we end up finding out that Bugs and her operator is to realize that this is all to be set up as some weird trap to sucker these people in to try to figure out what the heck is going on here with the matrix coding. So they go and they replay this scene all over again. And this time around Trinity is to be caught on this rooftop and is to have guns, uh, like to, to stop her from going anywhere. And Bugs is like, wait a minute, like, that's not how this originally played out. Like, they're doing something new here. And so, all of a sudden, we have Agent Smith show up here, and Agent Smith is talking to this police officer, and we have this police officer saying, like, well, I think we can handle a, a, a girl, uh, and... Agent Smith is like, well, your men are already dead. <laughs> so we have this Agent Smith, this new Agent Smith, make his way into this building. And then he ends up going, he ends up going and spotting bugs and starts to fight her. And they end up having this shootout. And so Bugs is to now have to go and try to escape from here. And while Bugs is escaping, we all of a sudden have uh, this Agent Smith that grabs Bugs and puts her into this apartment room. And we end up finding out that this is Neo's, uh, this is Neo's place. This is to, of course, be the, you know, you know, the one scene in, in the Matrix 
where Neo is to be following the right the white rabbit, that little place that Neo is in where his computer is kind of typing at him to like wake up Neo. Like that scene is kind of recreated here. So we have Bugs a asking this Agent Smith, like, hey, why did you protect me? Why did you save me? You could have killed me. And Agent Smith is starting to realize that he is starting to see things, dream things. And at one point, he is to go after the shower and he is to see a glitch in the matrix and he is to touch this mirror and this mirror is to uh kind of uh like ripple and so agent smith is starting to realize that he is not actually agent smith and he is morpheus and that he is going to get unhooked from the Matrix and join up with Bugs. And so this Morpheus is to come here as this digital uh, like presence. And it looks very weird. So we now transition on from that. Because Morpheus is to have the goal of refinding Neo. And so Thomas Anderson is to be this game developer. And I'm not quite sure what their company is called. I'm assuming that they're like... Thomas Anderson is to have this thing on this computer called Binary. So I'm kind of wondering if that's actually what the company is called, the gaming company. And so Thomas Anderson, who is to be Keanu Reeves here, is going on and seeing some goofy things in, uh, in his game that is to be called The Matrix. So Thomas Anderson is to go off with this one gaming developer to have coffee and we have this guy, this gaming developer telling Thomas that he had almost failed the seventh grade because of this guy's game and, and just kind of really just uh, buttering this guy up. So it seems that Thomas Anderson is to spot a woman coming into this cafe and it is to be a girl that looks like trinity and so this gaming developer is to say hey man like you had done so much for me like in my for my childhood and whatever i'm gonna go and do something for you so this gaming developer guy goes over and is to introduce himself to this girl. And we end up finding out that this girl who looks like Trinity is to be called a girl named Tiffany. Because evidently uh, her mother was to be a fan of, of, uh, of Audrey Hepburn. And like if of course you guys don't know what that means. Like there's a movie called Breakfast with Tiffany. It's kind of a... Uh, much more kind of uh, like Technicolor kind of movie or something like it was kind of much more done during a certain time period so but like we had this girl that was in a lot of movies the the main girl who was in Breakfast and Tiffany like she was in a lot of other films I think like Roman Holidays and a lot of other kind of stuff so So Tiffany is to go on and talk to this guy and so all of a sudden Thomas Anderson is to just kind of walk over and be like, well, yeah, I guess I should just go over and uh, and just kind of introduce myself too. So 
all of a sudden it seems that both Tiffany and Thomas, like it seems that there's something just so familiar between the two of them that it feels like this is some kind of weird deja vu like moment. So we all of a sudden realize that Tiffany is to have kids and then also she is to have a husband. And so we really have Thomas who's like, well, I guess like, I guess, I guess I came at her a little bit too late, so to speak. So Tiffany is to be kind of dragged out of this cafe by her family, just saying like, hey, like, uh, we're busy. We got to go. We got to leave. And there's a whole reasoning for that. Uh, we end up finding out that this family is to be inserted with Tiffany to, like, try and force her away from being in familiar territory with Thomas Anderson. So... So we go on here, and so Thomas is think tanking what he's what he should do with this new uh, video game called The Matrix Four because Warner Brothers is to want to sign off for there to be another The Matrix game, and I'm like, <laughs> this is so like there's so many meta things going on in this thing. Weirdly. Uh, that they're wanting to like put here and I I find it fun and I find it like amusing but like uh so because Warner Brothers actually owns the Matrix and so like now we have this kind of like tongue-in-cheek kind of thing going on here it's kind of like in uh it chapter two where we have uh, J uh McAvoy's character walking out of the Warner Brothers lot and I'm like uh like they kind of <laughs> they're really telling you who owns this movie so so we have Thomas Anderson who's think taking with all these people and now we have these like these weird goofy campaign of things that has nothing to do with what's going on in the game and they're just saying these weird, random, like, things that make no legitimate sense of, like, oh, this game is going to be a lever revolutionary. And, oh, yeah, like, ideas in the new drug. And, <laughs> and all of this, like, like, are all these people high? <laughs> these people must be high as a kite. To just not be, like, saying anything about what's going on in this actual game. And so I'm like, what the heck is even going on here? So we transition and have Thomas Anderson going off to talk to his boss, a guy who is named Smith. And so Thomas Anderson is all of a sudden talking to this guy named Smith. And he is to repeat some line from obviously the Matrix movie that Agent Smith had said. And this guy looks like Agent Smith at first, but then we change back to make this guy look like a normal person. So while Smith and, 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 and Thomas are talking, we have it where... Smith is to say that Thomas was to think that any conversation that they were to have with one another always felt like an FBI interrogation and to just kind of keep reflecting on old Matrix footage. And we have Thomas getting these flashes of the Matrix movie and all of a sudden we end up having Smith who's to lose the ability to talk because his mouth uh, like has skin just like uh, sealing his mouth to where he's like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and so Thomas goes on after this meeting and is going and seeing his therapist who is just to be called the analyst who is to be Neil Patrick Harris here. So we have Thomas Anderson, who's speaking to this 
analyst, and he's going on and saying that he is to possibly think that he's to have a mental break. And supposedly we find out that Thomas Anderson is to be a suicide survivor. That I guess at one point, Thomas Anderson had decided to go and jump off a roof. But for some odd reason, had survived that plunge, had survived that fall. To where we eventually go back and talk about this because Bugs is to mention that at one point she had seen Thomas Anderson go and jump off some, some roof and he didn't fall. And so Bugs seeing Thomas Anderson do that freed her mind to eventually go on and try to figure out how to get out of the matrix and how to become one of the resistant members of this matrix. So Thomas Anderson is to have his therapist, uh, Neil Patrick Harris, Go on and say, hey, like, do you need a, a a refill of your prescription? And we end up finding out that the prescription that Thomas is to have for these pills are little blue pills. I'm like, oh, my God, they keep going back to this whole pill situation. And kind of like the Morpheus situation where it's like, well, hey, it's either blue pill, the red pill, but... Like, really, just these pills are all just an illusion because, uh, like, you're already, like, know what you're, you already know the decision that you're making is. Uh, and we end up having also Morpheus, who goes on and is put on these sunglasses and start to act all goofy and funny because he's going to be surely going in, uh, into leaving the Matrix, so he's meeting up with all those agents trying to be uh like seemingly being an agent but he all of a sudden starts to break and then he runs off realizing that they are to realize what's going on here so thomas is going to and taking his blue pill and so What eventually transpires here is that Bugs is to eventually go on and find Neo in this film and try and to convince him to be like, hey, like, you want to take the blue pill or you want to take the red pill? Because we have Thomas who ends up getting a text from uh, Morpheus, and so Thomas Anderson is to make his way to this bathroom where Morpheus is, and so now Thomas is touching Morpheus, like trying to uh, naturally assume if this is real or not, and so now all of a sudden we have these police officers that are going through to try and kill Morpheus. And Thomas Anderson was to be told that someone had like leaked this Matrix game or that there had been a uh, like a bomb thing being called, like a bomb threat being called on the building. And that's why they're evacuating. And but really, it's just Morpheus appearing here to try and free Thomas Anderson's mind. And so we go and have Thomas Anderson and Morpheus go and meet with Bugs and 
so Morpheus is just continuing to, at some point, repeat lines from the first Matrix movie while some projector of it is to be slapped on some wall somewhere. And so we have, of course, of course, bugs now portaling them from this one place to this train station in uh, in Tokyo somewhere. And so we go on and we have Bugs telling uh, Thomas Anderson that it's time for him to decide uh, red pill, blue pill, and of course uh, Thomas is to take the red pill. And so we go on and they're going through this train and so it seems that they're starting to eventually have a threat come after them. And so they decide that they, instead of going, going, getting the, finding the, the phone and, and calling and then getting out of the matrix. Instead, this time around, people just go through mirrors. People just get like basically put through, like walk through these mirrors and are to be out of the matrix weirdly. I was like, okay, that's strange because in this train station, we have this really small mirror and we have bugs. Who's just like, dude, this mirror is way too small for us to get out of here. And the operator is like, well, appearances is, is deceiving. Like, once you go further into the mirror, like, it'll eventually work out that you can get out of here. So, Thomas Anderson ends up going first, and then the rest of them go afterwards. So, Thomas is to basically be Neo now, and he, of course, is to repeat the exact same scene of how he was freed from the very first movie, and kind of take the thing out of his mouth and is to be looking around and having all these kind of things attached to him. And we eventually have these sentinels that go and unplug uh, Neo here. And then we have this one sentinel going and grabbing Neo and flying him off to... Uh, of course, their resistance ship, the ship that has Bugs and Morpheus and and those characters, because we end up finding out that these Sentinels, some of them are to also like free themselves, I guess, from the hive of Sentinels. So we start to have certain kind of CGI like things here of certain Sentinels that are helping. I guess will be the equivalent of the Never Knezer ship. Uh, so now Thomas has to go on to this ship and we end up having him learn the new crew and every single one of these like crew members are like, oh my God, I'm such a fan. <laughs> I'm fanboying out right now because I'm such a, Neo fanboy. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I I it's great that you collected the the DVD and Blu-ray set of the the Matrix. Huzzah huzzah for you. So we of course have one guy that is to to be like the the Neo specialist and so we, of course, end up having this one guy who's telling Neo, it's like, oh, well, I have just a million questions to ask you. And Neo's like, okay, maybe later. Like, <laughs> So, we have Neo that is to go on to another training program where he is to have to... Uh, like fight Morpheus and so this of course is the exact same kind of scene from the Matrix movie where it's like stop trying to hit me and hit me kind of thing like we had that same kind of like training program 
because Neo has to like regain his one abilities, his uh, like he has to refigure out what he can do here. But he also has this like Hydukin, like Dragon Ball Z, like push power that we now have in this movie, weirdly. <laughs> Hydukin, like, yeah, like we have Neo who really just has this push power. So we really have just Neo now that is just kind of like Chris Evans from the movie Push, where he's like kind of dodging bullets and he's Hydukin people. And so, because that's what happens with this battle. Because at first we have Morpheus that are kind of like cleaning Neo's clock and just smacking him around and pushing him around. And Neo doesn't really want to fight here. But then all of a sudden, Morpheus is like, well, hey, like, you know what I'm doing. I'm trying to free your mind kind of thing. And so Neo all of a sudden is to use his Hydukin power to then take Morpheus and to push him away uh, into uh, into this program. And so we then have, of course, that Neo is to not have to learn every single thing that he did before. He's not having to relearn to jump off buildings again. But he just had to go and do that programming to just kind of free up his mind. So we then go on and eventually have Thomas or Neo go on and uh, make his way to uh, God, where is she? Um, to, of course, God, I think I just said it also. Um, they go on to the, the, of course, place where the resistance is to be, uh, the Awa or whatever. <laughs> They're, uh, so, so they go on to go to this place and we have, I guess, the only Matrix person left alive who is, uh, Nobi, who is to be Jada Pickett Smith, uh, from the Matrix movie, because she's the only one left, uh, just kind of talking to Neo and kind of telling her the, or kind of, giving him kind of an update of what had happened from the last movie to now to this one and showcasing to Neo a statue of the Lawrence Fishburne Morpheus and is to tell Neo what had happened to him. Because we end up finding out later on in this film that both Neo and Trinity were to be resurrected by this analyst because he could not have allowed for them to die. And so the analyst tried to resurrect Neo, but something about Neo being resurrected, nothing really quite worked out. And so he realized that he would have to resurrect Trinity to then have Trinity and Neo, like, being a thing that could work out here, that could eventually exist uh, here, because I guess the Matrix doesn't exist without Neo and Trinity. So they had to bring them back alive here. So... So we go on and after the whole like update of what happened from last movie to now this, we still go on and have these like bizarreish sentinel things. Like we don't really have much of like villainous sentinels that are going after these, uh, these ships, like, uh, the past films. Like, I think they just realized that like, nah, like, Let's let's not go in that heavily direction. Let's stick most of this movie mostly in the Matrix. So 
their next game plan is that they have to go on and figure out a way to free Trinity. So we basically have Trinity being the equivalent of Morpheus in this movie, meaning that if anybody is to remember, of course, the very first The Matrix film, we had, of course, Neo, who is to need to go to save Morpheus in that movie and go through all these guards and have to, like, blaze through them with Trinity. And he's like, Trinity, help! And so we kind of have this moment here where Trinity is the Morpheus mission here. And so... Neo is to go on and find out where Tiffany is in the Matrix. And he goes on because Trinity at one point was to talk with Thomas and say that after Tiffany was to meet Thomas... She went on and, and checked out this guy's game and found out that there seemed to be a character inside of it that looked a lot like her and loved motorcycles like she did, like Ducates and, and whatever. And so Tiffany was to go and tell her husband that this character weirdly looks a lot like her and feels very similar to her in some kind of weird way. And her husband just laughed. And she laughed, but then she turned around and felt horrible that she laughed about that. That she wanted to just punch her husband in the face because she laughed about that. And I'm like, wow, this, this woman's weird. And she's realized that how awkward that was and then decided decides to leave shortly thereafter that and that tiffany is to mention that there's something about thomas that feels so familiar about him and but she can't quite put her finger on it yet so Neo is to turn around and to find Trinity where she's going on and uh, she's going and putting together some motorcycle because I guess that's what she likes to do uh, because Neo is to like to put games together. She likes to put motorcycles together. So Neo is to find her, find her and so the analyst is to all of a sudden do this weird thing called bullet time because we have the one people that are to go on and talk about the matrix game and talk about swarm mode and bullet time and all these weird gaming phrases and whatever that are going to be incorporated into this new latest game and so all of a sudden we have this analyst neil patrick harris is like well hey i'm going to incorporate all the things that you're going to put into the matrix, uh, I'm going to put here. So all of a sudden we have Neo that is to kind of slowly but surely just like trying to get to Trinity. And he's like, oh, I'm just so emotionally trying to get to Trinity. And so we have the analyst that is to touch uh, a a guy that's in this room to create swarm mode and to have this agent go and shoot Trinity, but the bullet is going so slowly and we have Neil Patrick Harris's character who's to go on and just be like, like, yeah, like this time you're not going to save her kind of thing. And so We now have it, of course, where Neo is to use his power to have this bullet not hit Trinity and not kill her off just yet. So Neo eventually gets pulled out of the Matrix 
And so they now have to like figure out how exactly to perfectly get to Trinity. And they have to come up with a real legitimate plan here. They just can't go to Trinity and just talk her into this. Oh no, like we have to go into a much more concrete like thing here and have this big huge battle out of a sequence uh, so that way we can have it make a lot more sense here. So, we also have, of course, Neo who's confronted with the new Agent Smith here. And this new Agent Smith is to have all of these weird, like, goofy, homeless-looking guys that are going and trying to attack uh, Neo's men. And some of them don't even talk in, like, they're talking in gibberish. So, we have Neo going on and fighting Agent Smith. And we end up finding out that, that eventually in this movie that both Agent Smith and uh, Neo are actually kind of having to forcibly, like, make an alliance here, having to team up. To go up against the new threat, which is the Neil Patrick Harris's character, which is the analyst, but like we're having them kind of fight, fight it out right now, so that way we can showcase the new improvements of this new agent. So, so eventually we go on and we are to have this girl named Sati who is to eventually tell us that she was a character from a former Matrix film somewhere. The whole subway scene where we have uh, Neo going and meeting this guy and this girl on this uh, subway station. For some reason, I remember that somehow. And that I think that part was to be that these people were on this subway station and they were always on this like loop, this nonstop loop of a thing. And they couldn't figure out how to break the loop for some reason. And so I think that's what I remember about that part. You can go and uh, like, go like, no, what actually happened was this because I just probably don't remember the matrix movie all that well. Like I don't even know how I even remembered how this woman was otherwise tied to this movie. Um, so Sati is to go on and tell them the plan of what all they're going to do. And so Sati is to go on and try to unhook Trinity outside of her little pod and by the time that uh, by the time that Trinity is to make the decision whether or not to get out of the matrix, they're gonna already like preemptively try to unhook her body so that way she can get out of the matrix. And like they're doing that before the Sentinels are to try and come and destroy Trinity's body. They're trying to do this like a quick, fast, and in a hurry. So they are also having this like whole like plan that Trinity still has to decide to get out of the Matrix. And they're putting up this whole big uh, thing to really just uh, like have this like yay or nay of Trinity here. So... Neo has to go back inside the Matrix to then have Neo with all of these FBI guards and all these police officers going and re-meeting up with the analyst and now having the analyst say, it's like, well, hey, like, uh, we're going to have Trinity decide whether or not she wants to stay here or whether or not she wants to go with you. And we're going to have like, and once 
Trinity does decide that then there's going to be this whole big massive battle going on here to try and eventually stop Trinity once she makes this decision. And do you think she goes and decides to, <laughs> no, I'm just going to stay in the Matrix? No. So Trinity is to forcibly make her way here to go on and look into the eyes of Neo and kind of make this decision. And so all of a sudden Trinity or uh, Tiffany's kids are to come in there and try to pull her away from this situation. All, her so all of a sudden her husband is to arrive to pull her away from this situation. And Neo is to realize that he had lost here. He has lost Trinity. And so all of a sudden we have Trinity who's having her, or his, her husband grabbing her arm and Tiffany is like, you know what? Get your hand off me. And so all of a sudden she starts beating the crap out of her husband. And now they're like, oh, like she's decided. And so now like guns are blazing, fights are happening. Uh, Neo and his team are trying to fight off all of these uh, FBI agents that are all in these like bulletproof uh, or bulletproof vests and this and that. All of a sudden to have Agent Smith come uh, come into this place and try and help out Neo. And so now both Neo and Trinity are to go and find this one motorcycle and race their way out of here because <laughs> we have one of uh, Neo's men asking Neo, it's like, well, hey, like, uh, can you still fly? And so Neo, like, tries to fly, but then he just, like, jumps a little bit, and he's like, no, I guess not. <laughs> and so Neo is deciding to go and, like, fight it out, like, <laughs> to fight, like, all of these, like, massive crowds of people that are all lined up here to go and take on Neo. I'm like, yeah, let's go and take him on. And so all of a sudden... Tiffany is to arrive here with this motorcycle, just like, hey, Neo, get on. So they go on and they're like motorcycling their way uh, out of here. We end up having these vehicles chase after them. All of a sudden, we have all these agents that go on to go into all these people. And they're dive bombing out of their apartment complexes and buildings. They're jumping out to eventually one by one just freaking fall uh to their deaths to stop uh neo and trinity and we just see bodies just flying it's freaking like oh my god this is so horrific so we eventually have both neo and trinity going on to the uh the top of this building and so we now have to have them like jump off of this building and so we have the operator thinking like oh are they gonna make it like are they gonna f uh, like are they gonna go and jump and, and make it from building to building like what's gonna happen here so what ends up happening is all of a sudden we we have it where both of these characters are now like kind of floating in the sky and we're like oh my god is is neo flying here or is or is neo floating here is trinity floating no we end up finding out that trinity is to have some variety of neo's power so it seems that what Neo doesn't have, Trinity does. So Trinity is to now have the ability of flight. And so Neo has all the other one powers. So Trinity is to take Neo and kind of fly out of this area. 
and to eventually go on and be unhooked. And so now this seems to be the big, ah, oh, kind of moment. It's like, oh, like, yeah, we should probably end the movie here. But no, we then go and have Trinity and Neo making it back uh, to, of course, this analyst's office that is now, like, half of it is, like, it looks like a bomb went off in this, uh, this therapist's room. And so now we have Trinity going beating the crap out of, uh, out of the analyst. And it seems like he is to reheal from whatever wounds he is to have. Like if he breaks his jaw, he goes and snaps it back into place. And so we now kind of have like at the end of the very first Matrix movie where Neo is to go on and have that phone call to, to eventually like tell people it's like, uh, like, hey, I know you're scared, but like I'm gonna uh like I'm gonna go on and uh and show you a world that uh that's not and, and all this like he's having this like declaration uh at the end of uh that movie. And so we go on and we have the same kind of declaration that's to be happening here where Trinity is to stand her ground and it's to tell the analyst that, um, that they're going and they're going to free everybody. And the analyst is like, I'm sorry, like these sheeple won't go and, and, and do what you want. And so Trinity is like, well, <laughs> Like, we'll see about that kind of thing. So, like, that's just kind of how this movie is to end with them just kind of declaring uh, that they're going to fight this analyst and, and win. We, of course, have so many times where they are to uh, talk about the Oracle in this movie, but it seems like there isn't a new Oracle in this film. It just seems like they end up talking about that this... Uh, that this character was to be cool once, but like, they don't say who the new Oracle is now. Like, I guess like that was the one thing that didn't get retconned. And plus also, what did they really need the Oracle for anymore? Like they already found uh Neo. So what do they really need this character now for? So with that said, I think that covers most of this movie. I paraphrase the sh out of it. Uh, just because, like, uh, there's slathered with dialogue. So much about this was just, like, man, how am I even going to talk about this? Because the way that they approach all this dialogue, I'm just like, God, what a mind-numbing movie. Um, I was so hoping, like, there would be a lot of cool action sequences in here. And they couldn't have been bothered to give us any of that because I think we just have like some characters that are like, well, yeah, we don't really want to like uh, hurt certain characters because they're going to go on and do other things, a.k.a. Uh, Keanu Reeves is going to have to go on and do like John Wick movies probably. And so it's like, hey, we don't want to hurt uh, Keanu here because like he's a real important actor and he's going to do a lot of things here. <laughs> he's got to go and do a lot of movies so <laughs> we don't want to hurt him here because he's probably doing this in a in a billion other things uh right after this is over so it kind of feels like like all the new characters had to do a lot of heavy lifting in this movie and all the old characters just had to freaking like hey man i'm just gonna show up <laughs> all i gotta do is just show up here and that's what's kind of disappointing about this film is the characters that should be doing some real substantial things here are really just like, hey, we're here again. <laughs> like we're going back and uh, and talking about the good old days. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I'm going to get out of here. I think I've talked about this 
movie good enough? Uh, like, really, some people are just like, oh, yeah, I just wanted to hear the consensus about this film and it, just to know how bad it was because I think everybody is to, like, have that kind of reaction already because I kind of thumbed through some of the uh like reviews after i went in and uh like reviewed this because like i wanted to see if people like there's there's some times where i where i go on and i watch reviews before i do something uh so that way i can just be like well hey like it seems like i'm the only one who has a negative opinion about this movie and everybody just overwhelmingly loved it and whatever but like i'm seeing that it feels like for the few people that did this review it feels like they also had a negative thing about this that the people that were to have gone on and write this movie before and to put this together now like are kind of saying that like yeah this movie freaking sucks it's basically the star wars episode uh, seven approach to the matrix and like it's kind of obvious that they're going and they're gonna go and pop out another one of these things uh so we're gonna see how this all plays 